on to the next dish. This is a, a soup that was in, I was inspired from a diet fad that I remember when I was, was younger uh, and my mom was on this cabbage soup kick oh, yeah. and it was like four or five days of cabbage soup and um, you ate whatever your mom was cooking pretty much so I used to love those weeks. <laughs> Um, so this poor baby Jeremy yes. lost ten pounds and his mom didn't. It was very unfair. That's a lot of cabbage. That's a lot of cabbage in the week. Uh, Going to school and trying to concentrate on cabbage yeah. soup. I don't right. know about that. So this is uh, going to be a little bit of a play on that. We're going to use some really really nice vibrant flavors. One of my favorite types of cuisine. Um, and so this is going to be a tum yum style of soup. So tum yum is uh, it's a Thai soup. Um, very, some sort of very traditional ingredients and then, that I'll be showing you today. And it's really gonna give this soup a lot of flavor. Uh, we're doing it as sort of like a fish stew, uh, but you can definitely do it as like completely vegetarian, um, whatever you want, it's an excellent, excellent flavor. So, I'm gonna start off, uh, get my pot ready, add a little bit of olive oil. Probably not a Thai ingredient, but <laughs> that's where my Italian blood comes from. Okay, so olive oil and there. It's a heart healthy oil, of course. So the Mediterranean diet was always up there. They did a, a roundup recently of the healthiest diets across the board and Mediterranean is up there in the top couple over the past five years. So olive oil is one of the frequently used oils in that diet. All right, so we have our olive oil, just roughly chop onion and it's a, it's a quiet whisper of a sizzle, but it's there. Remember, you always want your food to talk to you. So we'll put a little bit of that onion there just to get started. And then for our tum yum. So you can do this a couple of ways. Um, I've seen it done where it's more of like a stock, like you would make a stock. So all whole ingredients, you put it into a pot, cover it with water, let it simmer like you're making a vegetable stock. And you get those flavors, um, those tum yum flavors, and then you can use that to make the soup. I like making it a sort of a paste um, because I, I really intensifies the flavor in the soup. Plus I can freeze it after. I can freeze the stock, but it's easier to freeze just the, the concentrated paste. So we're gonna add a few cloves of garlic. It's cold outside, so you can add an extra couple. Help heat things up. And also cold and flu season is upon us. And garlic does have some, some virus fighting and antibacterial properties to it. So incorporating some into your diet. A good thing, you know, for that point of view and also may help to reduce risk of several types of cancer. So trying to have a clove a day and a quarter cup of onion a day has been associated with lower risk of several types of cancer. There you go. Don't have to have it raw. You can have it in your recipe. <laughs> Ginger, again, big flavor, really, really nice. Uh, chili, again, if you like chili, this is another one you should be able to find, no problem. If you don't like chili, obviously you don't have to add it. Um, what I like to do is leave the seeds if you like it spicy. If you don't, especially with these like little red Thai chilies, sort of scrape away the seeds and the little white vein in the middle. That's where most of the heat is. And you can take that out and you'll get a little bit of heat, but it's mostly just that sort of fruity flavor from the, uh, the chili that is really, really nice. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't do is uh, they never taste the chili pepper before they put it into their food. And it's one thing that, I mean, I remember I never used to do it, um, but chili peppers, even though you can kind of gauge by the type of pepper it is, how hot it is, not, they it's really not all the vary, same. They really vary, don't they? Yeah, yeah, sometimes you get a jalapeno that really isn't, has no bite at all. Some will put you right on your butt. So. You have to <laughs> taste it, and I think it's really important to just taste a little bit, especially if you're feeding other people, how would you know how hot it is? So take a little piece, and eat it. And count to 10, because you might have that delayed heat reaction. It's a little bit of a tingle, <laughs> but it's, it's actually, it's not bad, it's not bad at all. So I'm, I'm thinking, especially in Five, the entire four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christy switched the peppers a little. <laughs> So now I know exactly how hot it's going to be. If if I need if I'm running to the to the fridge for for a cup of milk, okay, maybe I'm not going to put as much inside the uh, the, the soup or whatever whatever recipe. Depends how much you like your friends and family. Yeah, 
So something like that, it's always good to try it first. Okay, so chili in. Now, um, this is, again, optional, especially if you hate cilantro, you probably don't want to put this in. But the stems of the cilantro, even stems of parsley, are fantastic. They're full of flavor, really, really sweet. They're often thrown out. Um, but these are excellent in stocks, save them for stocks. Chuck them in the freezer if you're not making a stock right away. And then when, you, when you're making a stock, you can throw them in, excellent flavor. And pastes, rubs, beautiful. I love free ingredients. Or yes. things that come with your ingredients that you usually throw away. There's a use for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So the stock's gonna go in. Okay, so the cilantro stems go in. Now, does anyone know what this is? We've used it before. Lemongrass, Lemongrass. Lemongrass. beautiful. You might not always be able to find this, but it is uh, uh, an incredibly fragrant um, ingredient. So we're gonna use, take the outer peel off, which I've done, the stem off, and we're gonna use the, excuse me, just the bottom, the white parts. When I get up to the stocky bit, you can clean it up a bit, but this is good just to throw in. You can just throw this hole into the soup. Again, freeze it, throw it into a stock. Um, it gets really, really fibrous at this point, so you'll be chewing on it for a while. <laughs> so just the really nice white part right at the bottom. That's gonna go in. If you couldn't find the lemongrass, could you just put some lemon juice? Um, would I wouldn't put the juice, too? but I would put, put the, <laughs> the zest. Zest would be good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the zest, and I'll, I'll tell you in a second why I don't put the juice. This is another very, very traditional ingredient. Does anyone know what this is? <coughs> bay leaf? Looks like bay leaf. Lime leaf. Ooh. Yes. So this, again, I found it at a regular grocery store. You might not always be able to find it. Um, this is an incredible flavor. What you do is you kind of like bash it up, rip it up with your finger a little bit. And I'm going to pass it around for you to smell it. Um, extremely fragrant. Um, lime. Um, the kefir lime grows off of uh, this plant. It's mainly used for the leaf and the zest, not really for the juice. Um, but it's, it's got this almost perfumey lime flavor. Again, very, very traditional. If you eat Thai food, you'll, you should be able to recognize this flavor. It's used quite a bit. Uh, if you can't find this, again, you might not be able to. Lime zest. Really, really nice perfumey, but not, not the juice. The lime, I, I, regular Loblaws had it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, for some, sometimes I know like a, a TNT or some, or even on, um, on Spadina, some of the grocery yeah. stores that they'll have, I know they'll have lemongrass, even galangal and, and some of those, those ingredients. But um, some of the regular grocery stores are starting to carry it now, which is great. So if we can't find lime leaf, lime zest will work just fine. I did find it, so. <laughs> You're gonna do both for extra I'm lime flavor. Just tear it up, put it in there. I'm not gonna put the juice because I want the juice just to sort of finish the soup. If I would have put something very nice and fresh and citrusy like the juice ahead of time, you're gonna lose that sort of freshness um, in in the lime juice. So save it, save it to the end. So the last ingredient is my favorite fish sauce. Again, very very traditional. If you eat Thai food, uh, a lot of cuisine actually, not even just Thai food, but they'll use some sort of fermented fish Oyster sauce. sauce Oyster sauce. Chinese food. Wor yeah. Worcestershire Shire Worcestershire. sauce. <laughs> Another one. That, that is... W sauce. That's fermented anchovies. It's a, it's a, that's, that's what gives it the flavor. So there it's used quite a bit for what Christy said before. Umami, umami. flavor. So that savory flavor, that really, really nice. It doesn't come across as fishy when you use just a little bit. So it melts through everything else. Um, but again, beautiful ingredient. You can find it pretty cheap. It, does it have as much sodium as soy sauce? It has uh, probably not as much as soy, but it does have, um, yeah, it has quite a bit. So that's why I'm not adding any salt to this. Um, yeah, and then you can taste it after to see where you're at, but it does have sodium. The good ones, the good fish sauces, like you can get, there's so many different types of fish sauces. The ones I like are literally just anchovies and then they'll have salt like two ingredients and water obviously but um yeah just a little bit that's all you need so we're gonna buzz that up and i, I don't want to turn it into a mush just a sort of um paste yeah just a sort of paste to help it out yeah so you scrape down the sides but after that first blitz 
I already, I'm already hit with this aroma. Flavor sensation. And we're gonna just do it up again real quick. And we'll do, you can do it a, a couple more times. I'm gonna just go at this point here. But you can see how it's, it's pretty dry. Uh, but again, this freezes really well. Put these in your ice cube trays, in the freezer. Fantastic, beautiful. Just like that? Just like this. Yeah, you can add, if you want it to like puree a little more so it's smooth, you can add a little bit of oil, like a little bit of olive oil if you want. Um, but I, I like it kind of just like this. Really, really nice and fresh. So I'm gonna add, and you guys can tell me as soon as you smell it, but it's, I'm gonna add a couple <laughs> tablespoons. You can smell it already in here. the front row, yeah. It's super fragrant. Really, really nice. This is a great one, like Jeremy said, to have on hand in your freezer. When you don't have time to make stock, you know, throw this into your recipe, make a quick soup. Mm. It'll really pack in some flavor. So there's a couple tablespoons in there. And stir it around. Just for a couple minutes. Your, the ginger, the garlic is broken down pretty small. So it's gonna burn pretty quick if you don't keep an eye on it. So gentle heat. The entire time I've had medium heat, I've got a little bit of color on the onions, and I just want to activate. Can you guys start to smell that? Yeah. Ginger, lime, chili, garlic. Like it's, it's really, really <laughs> flavor explosion. Uh, so about a minute or two on that, and then we're going to start adding the rest of our ingredients. So the rest of our ingredients are pretty simple. Um, here's our favorite cabbage. <laughs> uh, again, a great way, like when you buy those heads of cabbage, you probably have enough for like five years of cabbage. <laughs> this is a fantastic recipe to use. So uh, I added just a little bit of tomato. Um, at this time of season, the fresh tomatoes, I'm not a big fan of them. So you can definitely use the canned chopped tomatoes. Just make sure you look for uh, a low sodium one. Uh, some, they have like no salt yeah, ones yeah. now, yeah. Which, are, which are great. Um, and once it comes up to a boil like this, so I've added my cabbage, this is a very, very fast soup. We're gonna add our cod. So this is, again, any white flaky fish, any fish actually will work in this. And that's gonna go right in, big chunks, top it off, and then this is when we would add the fresh cilantro, or if you hate cilantro, obviously don't add cilantro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, force you, I'm gonna force you to eat cilantro in this recipe. You will love it. And then some lime juice. This is when we would add the fresh lime juice just at the end. And that's it. This is a really, really fantastic soup uh, for the summer. Or not the summer. <laughs> uh, the for summer anytime. soup. Anytime.